Oh, let me make sure this uh, yeah. window in the kitchen is closed so you won't hear like people shampooing their cars. <laughs> <laughs> if you could. Some hoodie or jacket, sweater. What do you need? This is wonderful. Oh, thank you. I thought I was like, you need a sweater? No, <laughs> jacket, I, I got one. I called it like three different things. Jacket. <laughs> Hoodie, sweatshirt. What, what you? What are you? <laughs> what is it? Yeah, I'm from Chicago, so actually, I think this belonged to Rashonda's, <laughs> one of her grandparents, and she brought it back when she like went home. Yeah. And you can wear it because you are from Chicago. Mm-hmm. Because like, oh, we're both from yeah. Chicago. I know. And I can look at you, right? I don't have to yeah. look into the camera. Just well, when I say the one piece, I should look into the camera, yeah. right? Yeah. The beginning, but then. Yeah. All right. You can look wherever. Okay. Like if you need to I'm just like this. I'm like answering <laughs> all questions like this. That? People are like, I'm okay. Like this. <laughs> well, I have to say that the reason why I do this, like, this is the most uh, oddest interview ever. No, oh, okay. put some uh, cocoa butter on my lips just to make sure my lips aren't dry, and I'll be good. <laughs> Hi, I'm Vaughn Kimmins, and this is Arts and Crafts with Isabel. Listen, put it. <laughs> it was perfect. Oh, what's my craft? Oh, being a Gemini, I never know how to answer that question. I am a musician, I'm a singer, a songwriter, shoot, a dancer. Uh, a nutritionist, all these things can be arts and crafts, right? Yeah. Uh, but my main thing, let me start front, is music. So yes, I'm a singer, and I write really moody songs. <laughs> right? I was like, then that's that's like the Gemini thing, right? You're like, I have all these interests actually, but I'm really only good at like two of them. So. I'm not gonna front. Two of them sometimes I get paid for them. Right? Oh, that's yeah. true. Yeah, that's true. But you can say it doesn't have to be just stuff you're paid for. Oh, no, I know. That's why I was like, I'm not paid to be a nutritionist. Like, I went to school for it, but I'm currently not getting paid for it. Mm hmm. I know. All these random things. I'm about to write on my Write on your phone. Like, what are your current projects? And can you even, like, dig back into the past? What other or projects have you been a part of that have brought you to? Oh, yeah. I am in a group called Brown Calculus. That's like a cosmic, jazz, black excellence group. <laughs> and then I'm also in Tribe Mars, and that's a seven-piece like uh, jazz, hip-hop, soul band. Um, and I also used to be a part of this group called Pop Goji. And that was the first band I was ever a part of. The reason why I can perform the way that I do on stage is because of this band. I just recently left that band in December. Um, but yeah, Pop Goji is just this awesome Brazilian band that helped me gain confidence. Um, and I was in that for about four years. Pop Goji, so that's a play on um, the word Pagoji, which is like a the easiest way to describe it is like it's a jam session in Brazil. So we put the pop in there because we do covers of pop songs and like soul songs. Yeah, because in in Brazil, pagogis everybody usually knows all the songs, and you sit around the table and everyone's all instruments and just mm-hmm. sings together. But if we were to just strictly sing in Portuguese here, people wouldn't be able to sing along. So we did covers so that the crowd could actually sing along with us. Does that band, it still oh yeah, that band still is performing. Actually, I'm a sub for them. <laughs> I'm a sub when the new singer, um, Kanda, when she's not available, then I step into that role. Which you is, look really comfortable. On stage. Oh, thanks. But I'm assuming it's taken more some more, but time. Like... Yeah, pop like really big in Pop Goji because we would perform a lot mm-hmm. for years you know that's it was just practice practice but I come from a background of singing at church and then performing like when I was a kid like in school musicals like in high school and all that stuff so I knew how to be on stage as long as there were other people when the spotlight was on me I used to feel kind of weird and get really nervous Mm -hmm. but if there's like a bunch of people around me then I feel very 
comfortable. Yeah, I was really nervous when we started doing brown calculus because Dre's there next to me, but he's playing, he's not singing, so it's just like my voice, you mess up. So people can hear it. You can't be like, right. Maybe that dude. <laughs> right. No. <laughs> you know, actually, when I first moved to Portland, Renata, who's the other singer in Pop Goji, um, I met her through my friend Michael, who's also in the band. And we went to her house to rehearse, like go over some songs. We just put the band together. And she told me, she's like, you can sing louder if you'd like to. Because I would just be like... <laughs> I wasn't used to singing where the focus would be on me. I was used to being part of a choir, or before I moved here, I was taking a singing class um, in like Brazilian, like samba standards. And that was like with a group of like older folks, you know, but we all sang together. Yeah. So the focus wouldn't have to be on me. Yeah. So and then when it's just me and another person singing, I'm supposed to sing a harmony with them. You know, I was all like, oh, oh. <laughs> When you're testing, that's why things are like, just find one, find a harmony. Oh yeah. Like, yeah! She would say that and I'd be like, oh, right. And go boldly to it. I'm like, I usually do this at home. By myself. Alone, I find it, I come back to the group. And I show you them what I found. You don't find it out with other people? And it's... I just, just find it. Like, oh, you're going to hear all the... <laughs> yeah, I was... I'm I was a, I was a nervous back. But yeah, just practice then we got we only did one show we were sitting down and then after that we're like no no we did two we did two and it just like collectively yeah this was not our yeah we're like and the songs are really lively so you can't really sit down and sing like stevie wonders like i wish you know <laughs> you can't just calmly sit down like wish those days <laughs> but it's but you know what's funny though because i think in brazil like pagogis a lot of people are sitting down, but that's just that is just the people who are playing, and then everyone else is yeah. up moving. Yeah. But. But that's like an established. Yeah, exactly. Norm. It's an established norm, and yeah. people are very like they're sitting down, but they're still like very passionate. Yeah. And yeah. Like here, it's like you're sitting down, they're like, oh, they're just background music. Here. Right. Like, is this dinner party? <laughs> it feels like it's been established much longer, and it probably is just because of the way that you guys work together. Yeah. It doesn't feel as new as maybe something that you know, oh no I know what you mean it's be, you know why though it's because we're not um new musicians com like coming into it you know it's like I was already in Pop Goji yeah. Dre was already yeah. in uh, Tribe Mars yeah. so we were both have been performing on stage for years so then it was just like two people who are now pretty comfortable on stage just like meeting up and being because we were already friends and hanging out anyway and he came to see me. I was performing just as Brown Alice, and it was with my friend Matthew Tomac. Um, and Dre came to my first Brown Alice show, and it was at In Other Words Bookstore. They were having a book sale, and I think it was probably to raise money as like a fundraiser book sale, because obviously it's a bookstore, so it's always a book sale. But. <laughs> Just in case people are like, Doug, you're at the bookstore. Why are the course having a book sale? Dre, I invited Dre, because we were we were hanging out a lot listening to Sun Ra records and just like vibing and smoking and just being ourselves. And uh, he came to my show and 10 people showed up. Because it was, and it was only the 10 people that I had invited. Which was actually pretty cool though. I think it was the evening. And so like people like, you know, I guess maybe it's hard to get people to come out. To a bookstore in the evening, you know, a small bookstore. But all my friends, yeah, who I invited showed up and I was like, whoa, this is so great. Yeah. Everybody got a free book at the end too, which was also great. <laughs> like, how cool is that? I think I performed for like, our set was like 15 minutes. Yes. <laughs> oh, I do remember because I didn't really understand sound you know and the way it works and like with amps and speakers and mics and like the softs the sweet spots and where not to go and 
I remember I, my friend Michael, who's in Pop Goji, he was at that performance too, actually, he played a little bit. But I had the microphone in my hand and I bent down to like pick up my water and it was right in front of the amp and talk about, I'll probably never hear that tone ever again. I mean, I quickly moved and I was like, so sorry everyone. <laughs> My friend, Chris, who's a sound guy, was there too. So I just like look over at him like he's probably like... <laughs> My favorite is the apology. <laughs> I did, I apologize. I'm so sorry, everyone. <laughs> Continue. I felt so bad because I was just talking. I was picking up my water. I was like... Aah! And I was like, woo! Well, there we go. Let's just wait a minute because I can't hear. <laughs> I just run it. I just run out the door, the front door. That'd have been great. But everyone still loved me. I was like still figuring things out, you know. Like, but people, they loved it. People loved it. Part of who I am on stage. I mean, often I am like performing, you know, like whatever that means. But part of me being on stage is me being myself. So I just usually talk to people, the crowd, like I'm talking to you right now so it just ends up me being like sorry about that y'all <laughs> oh oh my gosh the best thing a moment where I felt like really weird was uh in Pop Goji me and Renata forgot the words at the same time <laughs> and talk about like your face like heating up and my friend in the audience saw it she pointed was like oh! and I was like darn it thanks for making me you right. can't even look to the other right <laughs> take it no, you take it. No. No, but she's just like this. <laughs> as connected as I am with the energy from the audience when I perform, I'm a person and sometimes I get distracted. So sometimes my mind, I'll be singing and my mind will start to like wander and I'm so like, oh, yes, here I, you know, like, oh, oh. Whoa. Be present. Right, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I like playing at Mississippi Studios because, well, one, let's just be real. A lot of that's a venue that a lot of people go to. That's very popular. Um, a lot of people come out. But the staff, they're very, they're very friendly and professional, and they treat us well every time we perform. You know, like they're very just like whatever you need, whatever you need, and it makes you feel like, oh, this is how people are supposed to treat me. So definitely Mississippi Studios, and oh, the Doug Fur, they treat us the same way. It's a good space, you know, with great sound, and the staff is just always so supportive. That's usually what means the most to me is how the people who work at the venue are treating us, you know, and like how the sound guy is treating you too. I. I think we've had really good experiences because we've been playing at the same couple of venues. Mm -hmm. um, but there's some times where some sound guys aren't very friendly. Or some, I think because I'm a woman now, I like, well, <laughs> sorry to phrase that right, because I am a woman that now, because of, <laughs> like, <joking laughs> you're right. Like, oh, that's a whole other <laughs> layer. Right, I was like, wait, I didn't phrase that right. Um, I've noticed when I go into spaces and I introduce myself to the sound guy, even with Brown Calculus or with Tribe, especially because I'm the only woman in Tribe Mars, that I always like give the most like firmest handshake with like the most, not stoic, but just very like, I try to be very like, hello, so they will take me seriously. Because I've had people who think I'm just like there or I'm someone's girlfriend, you know, and it's annoying. So I walk in, I'm like, hello, I'm Vaughn. It's very like straight yeah. to the point because yeah, I don't like people treat me like that. You're just hanging out? No. Yeah. Yeah. That you're just, uh, what is it? Like an uh, accessory? Yeah. Band, right? It's like, no, I'm not just here. You got that DI box? <laughs> <laughs> Even as weird as it may feel sometimes because traditionally women, we're not always told to speak up for ourselves. Um, to be direct and not feel you don't get to feel it sometimes feeling sometimes like oh well should I ask that someone might get mad you know is that don't worry about that ask that person that manager at the bar the venue that question you know tell them what you need um, and don't feel sorry for it 
No sorries. Don't say sorry after you ask for something. Sorry. I'm sorry. Because you didn't do anything wrong. Sorries are for when you've made a mistake and you've like hurt someone. <laughs> so yeah, being, being direct. Being direct. That's what I've learned. Asking lots of questions of your friends who do know who who have been performing maybe more than you have um, learning how sound works you know like sound equipment and all that knowing how to plug everything up yourself that's I think what makes people feel especially women very confident in a space as a musician is understanding how all these like cables and things and you know like the dynamics in the room like how that that works so that in any space you feel confident. Because me and Dre have played in spaces where there haven't been really, it was really no one in the room. And we always look at it like, we look at each other and we say, well, this is a paid rehearsal that is going great, you know? That's like sweet a, though that you guys have that. <laughs> yeah. That you can kind of bear each other. Uh-huh. Because I feel like oh, for some personalities that would be so discouraging that they wouldn't be able to make switch that ear. Oh, say, you know, yeah. You know what? Yeah, that's an empty ear. Yeah. Thought, but to be a person. Yeah. So it's like, dig it. But that's pretty cool that you can switch. <laughs> it's always funny. We just like look at each other. But we've had like the a paid rehearsal <laughs> that have been so good though. Like a really good show because we always put our best like selves out there yeah. so even though even if there's just like one person or no one we're still gonna do a great show like everybody could just all walk out we still gonna perform we'll continue to the end <laughs> I love that <laughs> uh, when I was little I used to make cassette tapes of I used to record my own radio shows yes. <laughs> so did you interview yourself? yeah I interviewed myself I did the commercials and I also did the, all the music. I would sing like songs that were on the radio at the time. And I remember my father, which song was it? It was a George Michael song that was really popular at the moment. Which one was it? Was it the Faith one? Like, got to have it. It was in that one or like, Freedom. But I just remember singing it like so hard in this recording for my radio show. I didn't even know all the words. I just sang the chorus over and over. You can find that. I wish that still existed. I know that's long gone but oh, that, but, that'd be a treasure. but I would pay to hear yeah. like my I don't know what grade I was in maybe I was like second grade if I could hear my second grade self I'm um, like doing this radio show yeah. that'd be so cool I had like one of those note taker ones oh yes <laughs> and I would give them to people but I don't know where, what they were supposed to do with them cause no one <laughs> oh no one had that right it was a little <laughs> tiny <laughs> like here at the spy I always want to be like here at the spy I have yeah. them I had the top, I had the, what was it, the oh. top boy. Oh my gosh. The I begged, one. yeah, I begged my parents for that. Yes, they searched the whole city of Chicago looking for a talk boy for me. I probably played with it for about two weeks. <laughs> and then realized the commercial made it seem a lot cooler <laughs> than it actually was. Because it was just. It just was slow down your, yeah, that just slowed down your voice. But I wish I still had that. You imagine you still had a talk boy right now? I Be killing the game. I loved Home shit. Alone so much. Yes. That's why I wanted it. I had a big crush on Macaulay Culkin <laughs> at the time. I even bought like, there was a Home Alone, um, like, puzzle and game book oh, that I got from, you know, the of the book fairs at school. I would go yes. and you go, yeah. Yes, they give you a little magazine. Yeah, and you would like. <laughs> circle like way more than I would ever be able to get. But I thought maybe. There's always stickers and activity books. <laughs> but that Home Alone one, I remember staring at the cover because Macaulay Culkin was on it and just staring on it like, staring at it like, oh gosh, we're gonna get married. <laughs> oh my gosh, I forgot like one thing I wanted to add about um, my favorite spaces to yes. perform in. In addition to the Mississippi Studios and Duck Fur, I also, this is not a venue, but doing uh, YGB Portland, Young, Gifted, and Black and Brown events yeah. are always just, just, they're just good experiences. Like the environment is always good because there's always dope, very warm people. They're very healing yeah. events. So whenever we get to perform for any YGB events, it always, I mean, it is family because it's all of our closest like folks. Those are always, those are always the, the best. Like, yeah, it's always, yeah. The event needs to 
Mm -hmm. they they do lots of curation it used to be a monthly uh party mm -hmm. and then i would sing like at midnight i would do these mashups of like two songs like i would sing um lyrics of one song over the beat of another oh, yeah, song because i'm i'm definitely a ham and now that i've become more confident mm -hmm. i can be yeah. a ham even more and i know yeah i let my guard down a little bit but why do you be portland events just Man, being around just black and brown folks in a space yeah. and they like came here to support you and like you're giving them energy, they're giving you energy, yeah. that always feels good. Well, who, who does most of the, the songwriting? Oh, like lyrics? Lyrics, yeah. So maybe who does it most for your for brown companies and then like where did, what is your practice for that? Like some people have really formulated ways oh, of songwriting yeah. and, and others it's like stream of consciousness, they write when they feel it. Yeah. And, so like, what is your process? So for for Brown Calculus, I write the lyrics and do like, you know, the arrangements of that. And then Dre, he composes like the beats. So he makes the beats and then he usually, well not usually, he always plays keys on top of like that layers it. He has so many, there's so many different layers to what Dre does. I can't even like, it's so crazy. He he makes these songs with really complicated rhythms, but then he breaks it down to subdivisions, and it just gets. That's why people always have a hard time dancing at our shows because we have the weirdest rhythms in the world. I'm usually just like this. Like you might be. Yeah, yeah. and, and then you're like, oh, like... <laughs> that's okay. They'll do that little stutter and just get back into it. But I write a lot alone, so it's either Dre will send me what he's been working on and then I'll take that I'll come up with an idea write some lyrics and then when we rehearse we meet back up and work on it together or he'll play something that he's been working on while I'm there and then I'll kind of freestyle over it to build on an idea and then I'll write something uh, later or sometimes he's literally making the beat right there and sometimes that's a little bit harder for me because I have to wait a little bit longer for him to put it together and then I kind of like will jump in and yeah. freestyle too. Yeah. Um, but that's, yeah, that's really our process. It's like very separate at times, but then we come back together to make it a full thing. And what I love, I always know that I'm doing something right, or not right, but something's gonna sound good if I bring my lyrics to Dre or I start freestyling and then I will just start working on this idea. If he goes, mm, like while he's playing, you know, that's when I'm like, yeah. Does he know that you're looking for that cue? Note? I don't think so. No, I haven't told him. To. Because <laughs> when I really am excited about something that I've been writing, you know, you can probably just hear it and how I'm delivering it. So when he's feeling it too, that just like once he goes the mm, as he's playing, then I'm like, yes. I just it makes me want to go harder and yeah. and do more. And it really helps me too when I'm not confident in what I've written. Yeah. Because often I'm like, that sounds too pop. Like, you know, like this fear of something sounding like pop music yeah. for some odd reason. But I'm like, I don't know, that kind of sounds like this artist, like this arrangement. I don't know, that sounds too like mainstream. And he'll just be like, it sounds good. Yeah. I'm like, okay. Thank you so firm. Yeah, he like, okay. he validates all of that. Yeah. Now that I'm supposed to be working, like it's my career, it doesn't feel like how it used to be where I would just like be walking down the street and just like a melody would come in my head or like some lyrics and I was just like, oh, that's cool. And I would just be in my room and like on like garage band making these like really horrible beats, you know, but trying to come up with an idea and all that. Yes. And I, I don't know if I, that doesn't, I, now I have to be more intentional about creating that space for myself. Yeah. It's not just the, oh, I, these random ideas are just coming to me. Now it's very like, all right. I'm a musician and I'm supposed to do this. And I, I, I don't um, look at it as this pressure to just put out music, yeah. but I want people to still hear like the genuine things that I have to say, yeah. but it's, it gets a little bit harder when now, cause before I would just be like at home doing it. Now there's like, emails there's like admin stuff to do you know there's meetings and all this Job and part of it yeah of so now like yeah. that takes some of the time that you had when you were just like i'm a free bird yeah. just write whatever i want it just mm -hmm. makes it now more like 
this is a little bit more serious. So I've been figuring out how to like not feel that way like all the time. Yeah, I mean, what are you writing about? What do you want to write about currently? Like even if it's not in song format, are there any flowing like You know what's so funny? I've always wanted to write songs. You know like how old old jazz songs and um tended to talk about sometimes I had topics that ha actually had nothing to do with people like they were singing about like animals like I don't know like a, a bird or like some chicken like on the farm doing something you know like I kind of want to write more I mean my lyrics are pretty can be pretty abstract but in a way where it's not like or it's just a little bit more like fun. It's like telling a story about some mythical creature or something yeah. like that. Yeah. You're an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. How long has it been since this has been like your job? <sighs> Brown Calculus has been, is the project where I feel like now it's like I have to become a businesswoman. Yeah. Especially because <clears throat> I can lean, in Pagoji, I can lean, and even Try Mars, I can lean on other people to do some other things but when you're in a duo it's just us and then it's like our manager yeah. you know it's like all right we all have a big piece. Yeah. yeah and she she helps us stay on because we're me and Dre are both like ah you know i'm an artiste like i don't know about some stuff i'm not good at that <laughs> and she's like well you still gotta do it <laughs> yeah so i would say the past yeah, like a year and a half. That's. I now feel like it's a business. And what are the things that you have to do to keep this startup? Oh man, right? it's daily text threads with Dre and our manager Rashonda, and that's uh, usually her checking because she reads all of the emails that we get, and so it's her checking in with us. You know, like, did you see this email? Let's talk about this. Are you available? Do you want to do this? Should we negotiate with the compensation? Yeah. You know, like that kind of thing. Oh, it's like everything, yeah. like <clears throat> our promotion, like she handles a lot actually. Um, yeah, that's that's a daily basis. If not just through text messaging, then, you know, reading the actual emails and then responding to her messages. Um, so yeah, that's daily. And then we meet, it used to be a little bit more often, but we probably meet like, we see each other very often, but to have like a business meeting is probably like every two weeks. Um, yeah, and we have vinyl that's coming out soon from our EP that we released. So there's a lot of extra little things that have to be like finalized. So yeah, I would say it's daily. I don't spend like hours on it daily, but it's a daily, pro yeah. like a daily process. Communication between rehearsals, booking. Promotion. promotion yeah like you know or <clears throat> Rashonda has also her creative pursuits so you know I, we have to take on some of the other like some of the correspondence mm -hmm. so it's me like emailing like graphic designers about this flyer and this person and that booker and you know it's like oh gosh it's funny too when I see when I have to do it and I'm like oh my gosh so thankful for having a manager and that it's her because it's a lot to it's do, a lot to do. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah it's a lot to do that's why it's important that you have to advocate for yourself and that when people are talking about compensation that if you think something doesn't feel good you say it and then if they can't give you what you like need i mean it's like of course be reasonable but if they can't give you what you feel is good then you don't have to take it you know people are like you gotta perform for free sometimes, blah, blah, blah. I feel like that's, your dues yeah, I feel like that's a bunch of crap. And yeah, we've played for free, but it's because we're usually playing for our friends who have events and we want to support them in a way and we knew maybe they didn't have a budget that was like really big. That's different because that's family. But if it's people you don't know and it's not like a cause, you know, if it's, if it's some organization that you support, that's good. But if it's just somebody you never met and they want you to play their house show for $50, no. <laughs> like know your worth yes. know your worth because it takes so many hours yeah. of rehearsal of driving places yeah. of Learning prep you know of writing yeah. of just everything that mm -hmm. you deserve to be paid like fairly what do you hope people take from not just your performances but what you've offered this world like what do you want to be known for or remembered by 
it it's so funny it sounds it sounds so like corny and so cliche but I really just I want people to be like man she just like loved me so good and so hard that's it that's about it <laughs> yeah the the reason that I write the the lyrics that I do they usually pep talks you know like to myself um but I want people to see that we all struggle with the same things, you know, even though we don't necessarily talk about it. Because I feel like I talk about things in a way that people don't normally talk about it because it's a little bit vulnerable, you know? You don't want people to see, like, your weaknesses or stuff like that. So at my shows or just when I pass away, I just want people to be like, man, she made me feel good and that I could, that there's safety in being myself, you know? I always had growing up like a um, a fear of being misunderstood because I always stood out. <clears throat> excuse me, growing up, like being in an all-black neighborhood and dressing different from everybody is just like woo. You know, you st <laughs> you're like a, I never got bullied or anything, but like you, you you're aware. Yeah, that people are will say it. They'll say things, you know, like to you. So I always didn't like when I would see other people do being. Um, when other, I saw people being disrespected and like I have, I have an older sister but when I was little if people were like teasing her all of that like I would like go over there with her like a little kid yeah. like just what are you saying like to my sister yeah. and so just anybody like people on the street like I don't know it's just like this deep thing inside of me that I I have no patience for people their disrespect and for folks not being for folks being misunderstood yeah. I have no patience for it. Which sometimes that comes out of my personality. I shut things down really fast in those situations. Like I'll be like, no, no, uh. Yeah, that's why I sing the things that I do because I just yeah. want people to feel like comfortable in their own skin yeah. and not disrespected. Yeah. <laughs> that resonates big time. For real, no, no. <laughs> I'm like, where did this come from? I've been thinking about that a lot lately. It's like, where is this like, deep because people make fun of me because I will like shut things down like people have discourse if there's like a miscommunication you know people have this back and forth and I just am like Whoa! like say the thing that's like and we're done <laughs> so it's funny that people see like that part of myself Parashanga <laughs> <laughs> so good